Hey friend, John McLennan here, and in this video, I wanted to share a story with you about how I got started with tuning my guitar and some struggles that I had along the way, and I want to share them with you in hopes that you do not have to go through this and that you can fast track your playing, because that's what I'm all about here. This channel isn't about me, even though this story may be a bit embarrassing. The point is to help you so you don't have to go through this. So in this video, I want to talk about tuning. Now, when I first started, I actually had two tuners. And the first tuner that I had was this pitch pipe. And then I also had a just a Korg tuner. It was a black tuner. And I remember getting both of those and I remember turning on the Korg and like seeing the lights go back and forth. And the first thing that I would do, I never really used the pitch pipe because, you know, the, the electronic tuner was right there and I would just pop it on. It was more fun, you know, and I would see the lights and I would go right to the green and then I was in tune. Now, this is great to have a tuner around for these things so you can start to train your ear to hear what it sounds like to play in tune. Because there's nothing worse than being just a little bit out of tune. You could be playing all the parts perfectly on guitar, but if you're a little out of tune, it's gonna sound bad. And it also, when you know you're a little out of tune, it's like this uncomfortable feeling. So I would always grab my guitar, you know, and the first thing that I would do is like, I had a, a tuner that I would just set here and pop on, or you could plug into it if it was an electric. And so I always had a tuner. From there, I got these clip-on tuners and pedal tuners. And you know, these are great. I just went around my studio though. Th they seem to not last very long. I have a lot of broken tuners. Uh, these typically tend to last me about three months. And these go off the vibrations of the wood. So you just turn it on and they're great for tuning, you know, backstage if there's a lot of loud music happening and maybe you have an acoustic guitar, it can be really tough to use a tuner with a microphone. And so clipping on is great or plugging in, you know, to a tuner. So these are cool, but they, they break. You need new batteries for them. The light starts fading. And so these are good to keep around, but I was still not able to actually tune my guitar by itself. So the next thing that I learned was this system where someone was like, yeah, you know, you can just tune the guitar to itself. Oh, you don't know this? Let me show you. You just go to the fifth fret and you play five and then the next string down is open and then the next string down is open open, five open, you know, five open. Then when you get here, you go four open, five open. And they would just say, you know, okay, well you pick a string and then you, you know, you just go and, and tune from there. But what I found happening with me is I would get started, maybe I'd get this string in tune, then I'd go to the next string and maybe I'd drift a little bit and then as you keep going through that system, you're getting progressively further and further off. So I would play a chord when I'm done, I'm like, ah, you know, man, it's, it's not quite there. And then I'd go back again and try tuning again. And then I'd play a chord, ah, oh, it's not quite there. And I would sit there for 20 minutes trying to tune my guitar and then I would just get frustrated and I'd grab the electronic tuner and then I would just tune up and be like, okay, you know, I, I'm good. And so I would actually use Use this method where I would just only use the tuner for a long time because I didn't know any other way and every time I tried to tune by ear it would take me too long and I would get frustrated. So what happened is I would actually be kind of panicked sometimes if I was out of tune without a tuner or if let's say I went into a music store and was playing a guitar, you know a lot of guitars might be horribly out of tune in a music store and I'd be embarrassed if I was like sitting there trying to get, you know, the guitar in tune. And, and this was well into being a pro guitar player and getting paid to play. So it's pretty embarrassing to think, oh, you know, what are people gonna think of my reputation? You know, I'm a professional guitarist and here I am, I can't even get the guitar in tune, you know, and I would need a tuner. Now, a lot of players just have more naturally gifted ears. I don't think that I, had really any natural ability when I started. And still people today are like, John, how do you figure out so many songs? You know, I, I don't think that I have the best ear. I've just worked on it for a while and gotten better. So 
to the point of all of this is what made the change? Where did I make a turning point? And it was actually when I discovered this method of tuning the guitar to one string. And on top of that, instead of using an actual tuner, I ordered this. And you can get this on Amazon for literally like three or four dollars. This is a tuning fork. And the beautiful thing about this is it needs no electricity. You don't need any batteries. It's always going to work. It's always on and it's going to be in tune. And so what you do, this is for A440, so that's what this tuning fork is, and you just hit it, you know, and so I keep this, you know, in my studio on my desk, and this is actually how I tune every day. I don't use a real tuner. So you're going to hit this thing on anything, and it gives you the note A. You can even put it on the guitar, and you'll hear that note. Then what I do is I tap the fifth fret on the first string. And I tune that note up to A until it matches. Then I'm done with the tuning fork. From there, I tune the entire guitar to the first string. So from there, I play open, and then I play the fifth fret on the second string and I match those notes. Then I play the third fret of the first string, that's the note G, and I match that to the open G string. Then I play the open E and match that to the second fret of the fourth string. And then I play the open E and match that to the seventh fret of the fifth string. Then finally, I play E and E, high E and low E, and tune those. So what happens with this method is your point of reference doesn't change. So you're always going to that E. So the guitar is going to get in tune a lot easier. Then from there, I check these two octave positions. So I play high E, second fret of the fourth string, and low E, and check and make sure all those are in tune. Then I play the fifth fret of the first string, the second fret of the third string, and open A. And I make sure all of those are in tune. Once I've done that, I tend to be pretty close. And I'm in tune from there. So that's the method that I would recommend. Now, I don't go to my gigs and have my tuning fork, you know, or be on a studio session and be like, <laughs> you know, hitting that. That would be pretty funny. Of course, for those, I use a plug in tuner. I have like the Boss, the little standard white TU2 pedal. Or, of course, I have the clip ons. And then I also have some other tuners that just have microphones that are like freestanding tuners. I'll use those for acoustics if I'm playing an acoustic session those tend to be really great. So those are my methods, but day in and day out, I use the tuning fork at home. Now, if you don't have a tuning fork, you could still tune any guitar. Like if someone just asked you to tune a guitar, you could just tune it to the high E string, you know, just, just see if you can get it close and then go from there. So that's what I would recommend for tuning your guitar. As always, I hope this helps you. Again, just sharing a little bit of a struggle here that I had that I was able to overcome in hopes that you don't have to struggle like I did. To help you even more, be sure to pick up my ultimate fretboard guide at the first link down below. And this is gonna show you the five major scale and minor scale patterns that I use to map out the entire fretboard. It's super useful and it's completely for free. So pick that up before you go. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in another video real soon.